Hello everyone. Welcome back to my travel vlog in Germany. Today we are going to the historic city of Berlin from Hamburg. And it's a bright and a sunny morning. Now we are getting on the autobahn, which is Germany's famous highway with no speed limit restrictions in some section, and we enjoyed some high speed driving. As we leave Hamburg behind, the scenery starts to change. The farmlands Windmills were common sight through the drive and it was a beautiful sight to see through the 3 hour drive to Berlin. Berlin is the capital and largest city of Germany. To enjoy Berlin, we need to know about its rich history. Most of the places we would visit played a significant role during the Cold War times. Post World War II, Germany was divided into two, West and the East Germany. Berlin, which was in East Germany, had a special status which was divided into four sectors. One sector on the east side ruled by Soviet and the other three sectors in the west by democratic rule from US, UK and France. By afternoon, we reached our first destination, the Berlin Wall Memorial. This historic site preserves a significant length of the original border fortification. The Berlin Wall built in 1961, a 155-kilometre wall was built around the western sectors of Berlin. This is a window of remembrance. It honours the people who lost their lives while attempting to cross from east to west Berlin. You can read the informative panels and listen to audio guides that explains history of the wall and the impact on the people of Berlin. I walked along the preserved section of the wall. The wall features colourful artwork and graffiti. Apart from serving as a physical barrier which prevented the East Germans from moving to the West since West Germany was more prosperous and enjoyed greater political freedom. It also served as a symbol of ideological divide during the Cold War, separating the Communist East from the Democratic West Germany. <laughs> People could move between the divide given special circumstances through checkpoints. The famous Checkpoint Charlie was one which was famous for the standoff between Soviet and US during the Cold War. In 1989, it was peacefully dismantled, marking a historic moment to reunite Germany. The Church of Reconciliation was in East Berlin. In 1980, the East German government decided to demolish the church for security reasons. Today, a modern church stands on the site as a symbol of hope and reconciliation. A few artifacts could be recovered from the church and are placed on display here. Grenhaus Berner Strab is a significant building here because it was located at the border between East and West Berlin. The wall ran directly through the building and many found themselves cut off from their neighbours following construction of the wall.
we drove around Berlin city through the rest of the evening and decided to head to a hotel to continue our exploration of this vibrant city the next day. Next morning, we checked out from our hotel. Our stay was an intercity hotel, which was close to the Berlin International Airport. What you see on the right is Oberbaum Bridge, which is a double-deck bridge that crosses River Spree. It's a red brick Gothic style tower. It has a historical significance as a symbol of unity connecting East and West Berlin. Eastside Gallery is a 1.5 km long section of the former Berlin Wall. It was turned into an open-air gallery where artists from all over the world painted colourful and meaningful paintings on the concrete wall. This is a famous painting, The Fraternity Kiss. It depicts a photo of the socialist leaders greeting each other. The wall and its painting shows a visual representation of the city's divided past and journey towards its reunification. We got onto a city sightseeing bus. By midday, we reached Alexanderplatz. As I step out of the bus, I could see the iconic Berlin TV Tower and Neptune Fountain. The fountain was built in 1891 as a statue of Neptune, the Roman god of sea, with trident in his hand. It appears as he is commanding the attention of the surrounding water animals, mermaids and other figures.
Berlin Tower is an iconic landmark in the heart of Berlin, built in 1960. It was strategically positioned in East Berlin as a symbol of proneness of German engineering and was used for both tourism and broadcasting. The tower has a height of 1,200 feet. The spherical glass observation deck appears as a disco ball with sunlight being reflected from the glasses. I walked towards St. Mary's Church located in this square. Its quiet interior was a contrast to the bustling square outside. At the opposite end of St. Mary's Church is Rotter's Red House, which means Red City Hall. It is a town hall of Berlin and it serves as a seat of Berlin Senate and the Mayor's Office. This stunning building has a distinctive red brick facade and the iconic clock tower. Inside the Rotters Red House, we can see grand halls adorned with historical artwork and artifacts. Museum Island is a UNESCO World Heritage Site known for its collection for its world-class museums. As I walked in the square, I found a captivating rainbow from the glistening fountain. I enjoyed capturing this rare moment. Next, we are going to the stunning Berlin Cathedral, also known as Berliner Dome. This architectural masterpiece is a true gem of the city. The building is the largest Protestant church in Germany. The construction of Berlin Cathedral was completed in 1905. As you can see, it has impressive neoclassical and baroque design. As I entered, I was amazed by the grand interior. It has high ceilings, beautifully decorated walls and color stained glass windows. 
It's a perfect place for reflection and appreciation of cathedral's history and significance. We climbed to the top of the dome. There were around 270 steps to reach the top. My son was equally excited to climb, which made it easier and joyful for us. The climb might be a bit challenging, but the panoramic view from the top was absolutely worth it. From the dome, you can see iconic landmarks like Berlin Tower, River Spree, museums, and a panoramic view of Berlin City. This is Alter's Museum, which is adjacent to the Berliner Dome. We enjoyed visiting Berlin Cathedral and we got some beautiful snaps and souvenirs from this island. Brandenburg Gate is one of Berlin's most iconic landmarks. It was constructed in the late 18th century. You can see the impressive Doric columns and the iconic quadriga, which means a chariot pulled by four horses, 
perched on top of the gate. This sculpture represents peace and victory. The gate has witnessed significant role in the past such as Napoleon's march through the gate and the division of Berlin during Cold War. This is a memorial to the murdered Jews of Europe. As we walk, you will see 2,711 concrete slabs of varying height. This represents the enormity and the diversity of the victims of the Holocaust. Each of these stone slabs represents a unique life lost during the Holocaust. It's a chilling reminder of the horrors that took place. It's a place for reflection, remembrance and honoring the memory of those who suffered. It's a place that leaves a lasting impact, reminding us of the importance of tolerance, understanding and the need to ensure that such atrocities are never repeated. Reichstag is a historic legislative government building in Berlin. It is also the meeting place of the federal convention which elects the president of Germany. We continued our bus tour in the Berlin city and drove through other prominent sites like the Berlin Central Station, Bellevue Palace, Victory Column and Kaiser Wilhelm Church. From the historic remnants of Berlin Wall to the grandeur of Brandenburg Gate, from the sober moments of Holocaust Memorial to the vibrant life of the city, Berlin gave us a captivating blend of history, culture and resilience. The city's history is a reminder of the enduring spirit of its people who have overcome difficult times to build a modern and unified Berlin. I hope this vlog has inspired you to visit Berlin. Thank you for joining me on this journey through Berlin and until our next adventure.